All right, today, guys, we're going to be talking about um, some mindfulness practices to just increase the happiness in our lives. Um, but first, I want to ask you guys, how are we feeling today? Good. Like a 10. Like a 10? Scale of 1 to 10, how are you feeling, Nate? 10. 10? Both 10s? Cool. I'm a 10 too. Three 10s? That's a good day. Uh, so today, well, first, uh, if you want to look over here on the board, we have our standard posted. So that's going to be tied into this whole lesson about mind-body wisdom. Um, and so by the end of this lesson, I want you guys to be able to explain exercises that promote mind-body connection and be able to use them in your life. And I want you to uh, understand new strategies that can enhance your well-being and build up your resilience. So the key things that we're going to be talking about today are going to be rhythm and well-being, um, a strategy for cultivating well-being, which is a meditation practice called body scan. And then the last is um, we're going to be covering all or some of the benefits of exercise on the body and your physical slash mental health. You guys have any questions? No. Pretty, straightforward. No? Pretty straightforward, right? Cool. So right here, before we really get into it, I want to, I want to look at this essential question that I want you guys to be thinking about before the lesson, kind of during, and then maybe reflect on it after too. The question is, does the body have intelligence? Do you think your body is wise? Does your mind listen to what your body tells you? Or does your body listen to your mind? So based on all of your past life experiences, when you read this, go ahead and write down to yourselves, or we can have a discussion too, if you guys are unclear about what the question's asking. We can have like an open dialogue about it. Do you think your body is intelligent? Or is your body wise? Do you think your mind listens to what your body is saying? Or is your body listening to your mind? I would say body listens to the mind. You think the body listens to the mind? I think the mind listens to the body. Mind listens to the body. Well, what if I told you guys that you're both right? You know, I'm thinking like, let's say I'm doing, I'm doing curl ups for so long, right? My body starts getting tired. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's just like a mental thing. You just have to, you gotta overcome it. Somehow. Yeah, hundred percent. But then that's exactly it's like the flip of it. It's like oh, your body's telling your mind, I need to slow down. But then your mind overcomes that, yeah. and your mind tells your body, no, we're pushing through this. Mm -hmm. So it's an it's an ongoing exchange, but being mindful of what's talking to you right now when you're making that decision. Is this my body telling me my tired? Or is this my mind telling me I need to go harder? Yeah, that was a that was a solid point. And also just on the topic of like does the body have intelligence? Like yeah. just uh just think about how adaptive we are as humans, you know? It's like when you're sick even without medicine, like, you keep yourself hydrated and you recover. You get a cut in your hand. It's like, do you have to think about that yeah. cut healing itself and scabbing over? No, it does it automatically, right? So these are things that tell us that our bodies are definitely intelligent. You don't need to tell your body to breathe? Yeah. It just does it all the time? Sometimes you think about breathing and other times it's just automatic. It's a subconscious thing that happens. Yeah. Um, so this is... If we look up here, it's going to be our uh, vocab that we've been going over the past couple of weeks, um, as well as some vocab we might be looking at today. So just look at it and let me know if you have anything that's unfamiliar that you'd like to clarify or ask questions about before we dig into the lesson. And if you don't have any questions, no problem, just give me a little thumbs up. Move right ahead. Cool. All right. So, um, before the lesson, just for the sake of time, I kind of gave you guys a run through of what we'd be talking about today, and specifically music. Uh, and so, I asked you guys like what some of your favorite songs are that you like to listen to, and so we got the opportunity to listen to your guys' favorite song. Do you guys think that that made you feel better? Made you feel worse? Listening to your favorite song? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you feel better. Maybe you feel a little better? Yeah, I'm excited. Cool. So that's, I just wanted to show you guys beforehand uh, the benefits of music. So 
Science suggests what you probably already know, that our brains are actually wired to listen to music. In fact, there's new research that shows we have a dedicated part of our brain that's meant for processing music and listening to music and singing with others, which plays a role in helping us feel happier and more connected. So music, songs, and dance, they've played a central role in human lives across all peoples and places, and it served as a, mean, a means of communication, celebration, or healing. And there's a new field of musical therapy that's emerging where therapists will play music to improve medical outcomes and quality of life. Um, and so this will help with reducing anxiety, AIDS and pain relief. It's even shown to restore speech and improving physical coordination. The impact of rhythm can be long lasting and positive when you listen to music that energizes, lifts, or inspires. And I'm gonna take some time to also point out, it's like, you can listen to music that uplifts and inspires, but also you can listen to music that does the opposite too, right? So kind of like how we were talking about, we have to be mindful of, is it my body that's talking to me or my mind that's talking to me? It's like you have to also be mindful of what your surroundings are and what you're putting in your body, right? Because it's like the same way it can uplift you, it can kind of tear you down too. So we need to be diligent in thinking about what we're exposing ourselves to. So keeping this in mind, I just want to have a couple of questions, open dialogue, open discussion. Um, what kind of music do you prefer? Uh, what kind of music inspires you? And what makes you feel happy? So I would say uh, meaningful music. Meaningful music. Relatable music. Relatable, for yeah. sure. Kind of like, kind of like meaning behind or some type of meaning that you can figure out yourself. You know? For sure. Um, yeah, I agree, like meaningful music. There's sometimes you'll be listening to a song and like you said, it's like relatable. It's like, it's almost like that song comes on the radio and it's like, man, I was like meant to hear this song right now because it's just like hitting me in the feels. All of a sudden you have a, like a little tear in your eye, you're like, shoot. But it's like cathartic, it feels good, right? To just listen to that music and kind of like identify and connect with the artist in that moment. And it's also good, you know, to listen to like, what? it's a spectrum, right? So just being mindful of the songs that make us feel really good in, in those moments, going to those songs. But there's nothing wrong with listening to like a silly song or like, you know, whatever song. Yeah. That's gonna make you vibe with it a little bit, bounce your head, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, have you guys ever been to a live concert or performance? No. No. no? That surprises me. Never. Mm -hmm. Even with like the Boots in the Park or all the country concerts around here. I was supposed to, but mm -hmm. I, I had a, somebody came up. Yeah. You guys gotta take advantage of that because those are even even if you don't like country music, it's a. Uh, Sometimes it can just be like the atmosphere and the energy and the vibe around those settings, right? Mm -hmm. Like you walk into Boots in the Park, there's a bunch of people just like having fun, like just all good vibes. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So you guys can look at those questions and we can have a discussion later on if you guys want, but just for the sake of time, we'll just kind of keep moving. So actually I want to end the lesson with this part. So let's just skip ahead and we'll do the exercise portion. So, most people know the benefits of exercise and that they can have and what they can have on the body. So you might be thinking of like toned muscles or um, a really high cardiovascular health, which means that you just have a really strong heart and lung, can run a long time without getting tired. Stamina. Stamina. Uh, and then also maybe like weight management, just keeping yourself fit and healthy, uh, keeping that immune system strong. But did you know that exercise also benefits your brain, your mental state, and your ability to learn. So I'm gonna read this first paragraph, but maybe we can take turns just reading out loud. Um, so for the first one, exercise improves the ability to learn. So just as exercising our muscles makes them stronger, performing complex exercise routines can strengthen our ability to learn. So if you spend 10 minutes on a complicated fitness routine before a test, uh, so students who did a complicated exercise routine scored higher on the test than students who did not exercise before the test. Research suggests that exercise promotes cell growth, neural connections in the brain, which improves our ability to learn. And in addition to that, exercise can clear the fogginess that comes with sitting too long and can help us get unstuck when we're trying to figure something out. So even taking like a short five minute walk or break can refresh the mind and body and make it 
more capable of focusing and attention. Have you guys ever experienced something like that? Maybe you're just like couch locked, just like a total couch potato and you can't get up. Um, but then like the second you start moving, it's like, uh, it's, uh, the ball just starts rolling, right? It's yeah. like, even like if you're coming to school, there's one, you could wake up in the morning and just kind of roll out of bed and come straight to school. And you might have kind of like a brain fog, but maybe one, if you guys haven't already, try getting out of bed like 30 minutes early, going out, looking at the sun, going on like a five minute walk, walking your dog, having a nice breakfast, and then coming to school. And you're gonna, your cognitive focus is gonna be way, way better than if you just roll out of bed and you're immediately just like sitting in a chair looking at your mouth work. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's just like little things like that, keeping your body moving. Your, your, your body's like a, like a car, so it's like exercise is, Kind of like oils you up, moves you up, so you can just like you're better throughout the day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, who wants to read the second paragraph? I read. All right, extra quick. Go for it. You may have heard or uh, exercises improves improves our mood. You may have heard about the runner's high, a feeling of euphoria that an athlete feels after a strenuous exercise, mm -hmm. an experience thought to be tied to a release of endorphin in the brain. Endorphins are neurochemicals mm -hmm. in the brain and body that can relieve pain and generate overall feelings of happiness to activate. Try internal exercise and run, swim, or bike in sprints as fast as you can. You go for 30 seconds, then move at a gentle pace for three to five minutes before the next sprint. Repeat for a total of five sprints with four resting periods in between. Good, perfect. Do you guys have any questions on that one? Uh, no. No? Mm -hmm. um, have you guys ever experienced that? What it's talking about? Um, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I've experienced that. When have you experienced that? Yesterday. I think uh, the other day I was running. You were running? Yeah, me and my brother did. We were racing and kind of felt alive, more alive than when I was just walking. You know? Yeah, totally. It's um, it, like you have to, for like the feeling of like euphoria and that release of endorphins that it's describing, like you have to be going hard. Like you have to kind of like when you're talking about, you're like listening to your body, like oh, I want to shut down, like I'm over it. It's like you have to pass that threshold to even get close to having that euphoric feeling. Mm -hmm. So it's like you might be running, if you've never ran before, or you're not conditioned to be running. It's like you might struggle to run one mile and usually you would just shut down mm -hmm. but then one day you decide to run like three miles and that on that third mile like you're gonna want to die like you're gonna want to quit and give up but then you push it just like half a mile more and all of a sudden everything lightens up mm -hmm. your back gets a little bit straighter your breathing slows down and you're just in the zone and all of a sudden you're just like loving running and that's like the feeling of a runner's high but you can do that with almost any exercise it's just passing that mental block that your brain kind of puts there and says like, you can't do it. It's like, no, I can do this and I'm gonna feel better once I do it. I'll read the next one. So exercise reduces anxiety and depression. People who exercise at least three times per week are less likely to be depressed or feel anxious. This finding holds up for both gentle and strenuous exercise. People who practice yoga regularly reduce their symptoms of depression, and some research suggests that exercise is as effective as antidepressant medications in mild cases. Is that surprising to you guys, or did you guys already know that? Already knew it? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's, a, there's such a huge problem with people your age and older being prescribed these antidepressant medications that are basically a band-aid on this problem, but it's like, a lot, of, a lot of the time, very often, those same people that are on these antidepressants, like they're not going outside. Mm -hmm. They're not exercising. They're not taking care of their physical health. Mm -hmm. And so they're just putting these band-aids on and it's just gonna exacerbate the problem and make it worse. So exercise is hugely important for this. I'll keep, I'll keep going. Unless so somebody else wants to read. Sometimes you are what you eat, sometimes you eat. Yeah. You not junk. sometimes, you are always what you most eat. Most of the time. You are. <laughs> you eat junk, you feel like junk, you know? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what you what you put in, you get it out. What's that? Exer uh, exercise slows the aging process. Right? Yep. People who exercise not only look and feel younger, their bodies function better overall. Exercise. Exercise. 
exercisers are less likely to develop age-related diseases, more capable of maintaining memory and keeping things in charge. Cyclists who remain active later in life show no evidence of aging in their muscular system. And since exercise promotes brain cell growth, it counters the natural loss of brain cells that occur when we age. Mm -hmm. So have you guys ever heard the term, um, if, you, if you don't use it, you lose it? Or use it or lose it? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's your muscles, I mean, you have to continually develop your muscle or they will do this thing called atrophy. Atrophy is just a deterioration over time. And so naturally, if you're exercising, like cycling and stuff, you're gonna prevent that natural atrophy. And so it might not like add, well, it could add years onto your life, you know? But essentially you're gonna, this is kind of a side note from my college years, you have this thing called the morbidity compression. And mor morbidity compression is essentially just like, how long do you have left to live based on how you're living right now? And so if you're basically, if you have 30 years left to live right now and you start cycling today, it's gonna extend your life a little bit, right? Just kind of make, it's just, sorry, I went off on a little bit of a tangent, but we know that exercise is gonna increase the amount of healthy years that you have in your life. And so it's like to not exercise, you're, you're just shaving years off your healthy life. Mm -hmm. Something you want to avoid, obviously. Um, all right, next one. Exercise reduces stress and boosts self-esteem. Doing something good for yourself can relieve the symptoms of stress while reinforcing our view of ourselves as effective caretakers. It, may, it makes sense to take care of your mind and body by exercising, considering all of the benefits. Even a little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that just kind of summarizes everything that we just talked about it's like yeah if you're if you're worried about your health you're gonna have anxiety you're gonna be distressed it's like if you're always couch locked just sitting there it's gonna get harder and harder to get off the couch and go moving it's like if you're antisocial with your friends it gets harder to reach out to them and talk to them so it's like exercising keeps the body moving keeps keeps things running efficiently mm -hmm. and reduces stress and boosts self-esteem who doesn't, who doesn't like walking around looking, looking good? Um, so just real quick, answer this reflection question. How does this information above match with your view of exercise? Write what you learned. So really it's like, uh, if you learned anything new or maybe if it's changed your view of how exercise impacts your brain and your body, write about it. If it didn't change or you already knew all of this, Tell me that, that's cool too. Or if you have something that you're curious about and want to learn more about, write about that, and then we can dig deeper and dive into that. Whenever you're done, let me know. All right. Might be able to get you guys out of here a little bit earlier. Good, Nate? Yeah. Cool. So this is this is going to be my favorite part of the lesson, and I hope it's going to be your guys' favorite part of the lesson too. Um, so the practice. Oh, one second. Okay. So the practice of meditation is ancient. Well, let me first ask: Have you guys heard of meditation before? Yeah. I was talking a little bit about, about it with you before a class. You said you you do meditate already? Yeah. Cool. What do you know about meditation? What do you what do you do? For me it's more like I put a guided one on or I just listen to some like peaceful music. Yeah, there's some I've I've seen some really good guided ones on YouTube where you yeah. just kind of listen to it and they kind of talk you through a little yeah. meditation. You do, yeah. You know, like uh like first you want to analyze, you know every part of your body, you know, body scan. Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. I mean, and then, you know, just relax, you know. I think I should be doing it more, you know. I think that helps out a lot. Yeah, well, we can, I'm, I'm glad you already do it, and so it's always just a good reminder if you've done it before. I love being reminded, and if it's new to you, then maybe you can start incorporating it more. Either way, it's just uh, something that we should all be doing more of. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just to let you guys know, the practice of meditation is ancient, but modern science is now beginning to study its benefits on the brain, which has showed good results, positive results. Uh, 
we might think that meditation just means to sit down for hours on end, but actually meditation can be as brief as a five second mindful pause. I don't know if you guys have like an Apple Watch. I hate that like sometimes we listen to computers like this, but it's like sometimes I'll just get that little notification that says like breathe. I don't know if you guys have. So on your Apple Watch, it'll monitor your heart rate and your breathing kind of. And so it's like sometimes throughout the day, if I find myself like clenching my jaw and I'm like kind of stressed out because you guys like <laughs> got me <laughs> doing all this stuff, I'll literally get like a little vibration on my wrist and a little blue circle that goes breathe. And I'm like, oh shoot, like I don't want to listen to this computer, but also it's right. Like I do need to breathe right now. And then I sit there and I'm like, <sighs> and I feel my heart rate lower. And I'm like, oh man, I really did need that. I feel like the tension in my jaw is just kind of released. So anyways. Um, so it can be as brief as five seconds. Meditation and mindfulness practices train our attention, focus, and awareness so that we have more space to choose our responses rather than uh, react and regret our actions. So meditation can also help us become aware of our thinking in ways that allows us to see where our thoughts misled us or just plain inaccurate. So um, if you've done it before, I'm sure you know it's like meditation is a great time to reflect it's like man I don't like how I talked to my mom like that this morning like she does a lot for me like maybe I maybe I could have done better yeah. and so it's like if you're not giving yourself time to think about that yeah. then the next time you talk to your mom you're you might you might be you're gonna be more likely to say something you're gonna regret so just being mindful to yourself is gonna be a huge benefit um, Meditation provides a tool for training the brain to rein in unhelpful negative self-talk too. Um, so even for me, I'm, I'm sure you guys too, it's like you, it's easy to get down on yourself. It's easy to see all the flaws and things that are like wrong rather than, you know, all the things that are amazing and great and unique and valuable about you. Mm. And so when you're reflecting, it's like, sometimes I'll just be sitting there and it's like, I want to give myself like a big mental hug because like, I know it sounds like weird or cheesy, but it's like, Dude, the, the world has a tendency to kind of want to tear you down a little bit. And so it's like, you need to make sure you got it yourself. So it's in my, in my own meditations, like I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, I'm like taking care of my whole body. So it's like you've talked about and we're going to talk about today the body scan. It's like I'm loving every single cell in my body. It's like if somebody else, if I'm not getting it from the outside, it's like I need to make sure I'm getting it from in here. So um, we've talked about mindfulness strategies in the past. And today I want to talk to you about the body scan. It's a method for training or focusing our mindset while relaxing and tuning into the body. Regular practice can enhance our ability to bring full attention to experiences as they happen and to move through both pleasant and unpleasant sensations with a greater awareness, which gives us that space to choose how we're going to respond. This practice can be used to help relax the whole body and is particularly particularly useful in prepar pre preparation for sleep when you're when you lie down and systematically switch off each part of your body. Uh, so, just to go on that a little bit, it's like, do either of you ever have trouble sleeping? A little bit? No. 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 I mean, maybe one day you will, and you'll be able to use it. And if you do, then you might already be using this. But for me, like. 100% I will use this. Sometimes, like if I'm doing homework and I drink coffee too late in the night, my mind's just racing, it won't shut down. And I'll go to like my meditations and my body scan and you just, I'll walk you through it and then maybe we can reflect on how that'll help you go to sleep. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna walk us through this and it might, if you've never done it before or even if you have, it might feel a little bit cheesy, but uh, just bear with me and it's like what we said earlier, it's like what you put in, you get out, right? Mm -hmm. So, I want you guys to stand or sit comfortably. You may close your eyes or keep them open with just a soft gaze. Don't strain them. I want you to allow three to five deep breaths. Gently allow that breath to fill up your chest and down into your belly and pause. Contract your ab abdominal muscles as you softly exhale. Draw your attention to your feet on the floor. Feel the weight of the foot on the floor and the ground supporting your feet in space. Keep breathing. 
Bring your attention up your legs, noticing how they feel. From the bottoms of your feet, up through your ankles, to your calves, up the knees, and on your thighs. Imagine your breath is reaching down into your legs. Notice how your legs feel without judging that feeling. Are they feeling heavy right now? Are they feeling light? Are they warm, cold, relaxed, or tense? Allow any tense part of your legs to soften. Let it go. Keep breathing. Continue moving up your body, through your hips and your abdomen. Feel your breath travel through your lower back. Feel your breath in the trunk of your body. Feel it sticking to the sides of your ribs and your back. Now bring your attention upward toward the chest and your shoulders and upper back. Now down your arms to your hands and the tips of your fingers. Notice how they feel. Where are they resting and any support? Notice if your shoulders are lifted. If they are, allow them to relax and drop. Come to your neck and your throat, up the back of the skull and around to the face. Continue to feel breath reaching these parts of your body, softening your jaw and allowing your facial muscles to relax. Now sense your body as a whole. Take a full breath, allowing oxygen to move through your whole body. If your eyes are closed, you can bring them open. Notice how you feel and ch any change in how you feel now compared to how you felt when you began the exercise. So that's a body scan. I know it can be cheesy. YouTube videos are probably really, really good, especially if you're going to sleep. Um, I do that all the time. It's just like play a little video and you just get lost in this little trance and all of a sudden, your mind's not on like the problems that happen throughout the day. You're just focused I like how you're yawning. Maybe you're a little tired, a little relaxed. That's good. Um, so reflect on this question in one sentence. Describe that experience of the body scan and answer how that practice might benefit you. When, where, how often are you going to use it? If you guys want, we can talk about it too. Every day. Puts you, if you use it before sleep, you can actually be in like an elusive state. You get an elusive mood. I've definitely heard of that. Um, when you're in your dream, you're actually controlling your dream. Yeah, it's, I mean, you hear of, you hear of like inventors that would find ideas in their dreams. So it's like practicing this meditation. It's almost like a prayer. You're able to connect with ideas you wouldn't have. Yeah. And then once you guys do that, and you can just flip the page down to my little body wisdom survey. And so I have a few questions right here. Just go down the list and give me a one, two, three, or four. One, if you strongly disagree. Four, if you strongly agree uh, with the statement. I just want to get a gauge for where you guys are at with your mental and physical wellness. Once you guys are done with that, we're done for the day. I just want you guys, um, for your homework, I want you guys to come up with a little playlist. So like seven to 10 of your favorite feel good songs uh, and bring those to school next time you're here. And then we can all just kind of look at each other's playlists and mix and match and collaborate and 
build the ultimate feel good playlist and maybe we'll be able to play it here on campus while we're all doing work and stuff. How did you guys feel about the lesson today? Good. Nice. Thank you for participating. Wave goodbye.